Hello, and welcome to this demo of process mining in UiPath Automation Cloud. I'm Rachel Wong, Product Manager at UiPath for Process Mining. What is process mining? Process mining leverages the data from your business systems and applications to discover and prioritize automations and process improvements that drive your business outcomes. It also enables users to monitor the efficiency of processes impacted by automation. This demo will give you an overview of UiPath process mining capabilities in Automation Cloud. Today, I'll wear the hat of Benjamin, a procurement leader and owner of the P2P process at his organization who uses UiPath Automation Cloud. My COE has already automated the low-hanging fruit in the finance department. The early automations proved successful, so our C-level has started to take notice and wants to scale automation to other business units. We've identified procurement as an ideal candidate as our P2P process is a core process for our company with a huge bearing on supplier relationships, cash flow, and customer satisfaction. And it's not just customers and suppliers we're thinking about. I'm hearing from my team that they're handling more cases with exceptions and have seen a general increase in purchasing transactions. Many are feeling overworked and as a people manager, I need to do something about this. I'm ready to dive deeper and identify what's causing an increase in purchasing transactions with the help of process mining. When I open my organization's automation cloud, I have access to Orchestrator, Actions, Automation Hub, and more UiPath products and services, one of them being process mining. We've created an app for our purchase to pay process, which gives me quick insight into my process metrics like how many purchase orders we've processed, late deliveries, cycle times, and Maverick buying. As a start, my COE has opted to ingest about 410,000 rows of data from 40,000 purchase orders. And as we scale process mining in P2P, my app can handle up to a billion rows of data. Recently, due to the market changes and bounce backs from COVID, there has been a push from executives to improve and streamline the P2P process. It's important that we maintain relationships with our suppliers, as well as increase efficiency for our employees. Let's first look at Q2 in the year 2020. We can see in the KPIs from the previous quarter, the number of purchase order items we process has increased, as well as the number of different ways the process is executed. This in turn has increased the average throughput time. It makes sense that as users come back to the office, the requests increase, However, as a procurement manager, I want to ensure our process stays as standard and compliant as possible. I have a suspicion that Maverick buying may be the cause of the uptick in purchasing transactions. Maverick buying is a phenomenon where people in an organization buy goods or materials without following required procurement procedures. This could mean that my organization is potentially spending money inappropriately and even breaching supplier contracts. It also means that my team is constantly putting out fires, chasing transactions or suppliers, rather than planning or building value for the company. My suspicion is correct. I do have a rather large Maverick buying value of around $200,000 with 29% of my purchase order items marked with having some type of these violations. Again, these KPIs have been trending upwards, so it's something I'd like to mitigate as soon as possible. In this P2P application, we've applied out-of-the-box tags to determine whether something is considered Maverick buying. Maverick buying has certain process characteristics, for example, goods delivered without PO approval, invoice received without PO approval, and unreasonable quick goods delivery. The tags help me see that goods received without and before PO approval happen most often, so I'm going to prioritize these cases first. I also want to understand the business impact of these cases, so I'll switch views to see the value of these cases. The value of goods delivered without a PO approval amounts to $96,000, which is far too risky for our procurement process and accounts for almost 50% of our total Maverick buying. As I scan through the different activities in the process graph on the right, I can indeed confirm there was no approval step for the selected purchase orders. An optimal P2P process always has an approval step. This is impacting a large portion of purchase orders, so I want to dive even deeper into why and where this is happening. 
Now that I'm filtering for goods received without PO approval and goods received before PO approval, I can start understanding why these Maverick buying actions are taking place. Root cause analysis is another way for me to visualize that process, giving me a better understanding of what causes or influences Maverick buying behavior. In this scenario, what's particularly interesting to me is purchasing organization. Perhaps a specific organization is the main cause of Maverick buying behavior. I can see all my purchasing organizations with a percentage reflecting their involvement in Maverick buying. Those with a negative percentage have less involvement and those with a positive have more. As I review my purchasing organizations, I see that LSP Inc. has the highest percentage and is therefore a possible root cause. To double click into this scenario, I'll focus only on LSP Inc. To investigate further, let's look at a new layer. I'll add purchase order creator to find out who is processing these purchase orders. What I see here is that there is one user who has a high percentage of influence, meaning they are a top contributor for Maverick buying within the LSP organization. However, the other three have a negative impact, which means they are more compliant and less likely to be influencing Maverick buying cases. What is the difference between these users? What are the top performers doing differently than the low performers? To get a better understanding of how these users perform their processes, we can leverage UiPath assisted task mining to gather the click and type level activities. Process mining has not only helped me understand where Maverick buying is happening, but also helped me quantify the total impacted value. This will help make a business case to fix and secure executive buy-in to improve the process. I can now apply a holistic solution involving automation and general process improvements. Benjamin's colleague in the automation COE, Sarah, is also leveraging process mining to surface automation opportunities across the organization. She's working with Benjamin to discover and understand where automation can have the greatest impact on the P2P process. Process mining is helping to reduce the silos that previously existed between the automation team and the process owners by providing them with a single source of truth regarding the P2P process. Let's now switch hats to Sarah as she uses process mining to uncover and quantify automation potential. As a member of my organization's automation COE, my goal is to work with process SMEs to expand automation across the organization, so I spend a lot of time in the automation potential dashboard of process mining. I've been in contact with Benjamin, and I understand there is a Maverick buying problem that needs to be addressed. To assist with this initiative, I see an automation opportunity here to automate the PO creation process. A robot could help ensure approvals follow after, and this important step is never skipped. This automation will further reduce the load on my team and improve productivity. With the new automation recommendations dashboard, I can simulate potential automation rate, showing me how much time and cost I could save. With create purchase order being 0% automated, it could potentially be a high potential for automation. To get a better idea of its potential, let's configure an automation simulation rate. By answering three simple questions about the process and its potential documents, I can simulate an automation rate based on a formula generated by years of UiPath automation experience. As a process expert, I can say that for our documents in the purchase order process, 80% have a digital data input where more than 80% is structured and there are about two to five different ways to complete this process. It looks like this activity could be automated by 78%. Now that I understand this idea's potential, I can submit this as an idea to Automation Hub, a centralized repository to track all my automation and process improvement, including the ideas sourced from UiPath task mining or crowdsourced from employees. I simply submit this automation idea to Automation Hub, where my organization's RPA team can assess ROI and understand the impact in context of other automation ideas that come through. Let's fast forward for some time. The RPA team went live with the automation, and my team has reported less transactions and more time to focus on strategic procurement. And it's not only my employees who are happier, we're able to build better relationships with our key suppliers and reduce the impact of Maverick buying further down the supply chain, all the way to our customers. 
Moving on to Q3 of 2020, I want to see if my process has improved. The Maverick buying rate has decreased to 23%, and my Maverick buying value has also dropped $30,000. This is great improvement over a short period of time thanks to the efforts made in retraining and automation. As we continue to identify anomalies and process improvement ideas, we can leverage the compare feature to understand differences that occur between periods of time, users, suppliers, etc. The, flexibi the flexibility is there to create and fine tune your scenarios. For example, to ensure our problematic purchase order creator stays compliant, we can add a filter to both scenarios to filter for that purchase order creator. The user's actions in Q3 2020 are represented in orange, Q2 is represented in pink, and the blue activities are shared activities for both time periods. In the KPI header, you can see the impact of Maverick buying for this user has dropped to $0 and percent in Q3, further confirming the training and automation's effectiveness for this employee. With process mining, we've gained full visibility and understanding of my P2P process. I can identify root causes of anomalies and violations within my process and evaluate automation opportunities. On top of that, as my process evolves, I will continue to monitor my improvements, understand changes, and act on it.